International Contact Group talks on Venezuela. CARICOM condemns revised EU blacklist. Plans for CARIFESTA 14 are advancing well. And the CARICOM Secretariat advances mechanisms to monitor regional integration. Welcome to the CARICOM News Summary for the week ending March 29, 2019. I am Tusankin English Francis. And I am Michelle Nurse. Thanks for joining us. CARICOM Chairman Dr. The Honorable Timothy Harris, Prime Minister of St. Kitts and Nevis, is in Ecuador with the CARICOM Secretary General Ambassador Erwin LaRocque and Assistant Secretary General Ambassador Colin Granderson for high-level talks with the International Contact Group on Venezuela. The International Contact Group, established by the European Union, aims to promote a common understanding and a more concerted approach among key international actors on the situation in Venezuela. It is aiming for a peaceful and democratic solution to the current crisis and helping to create conditions for holding new, credible elections in Venezuela in line with the country's constitution. This meeting comes on the heels of discussions on Saturday, March 23rd, between CARICOM foreign ministers and Venezuela's opposition leader, Juan Guaido. Foreign ministers met the delegation representing Mr. Guaido, who joined the discussion via video conference anchored in Bridgetown, Barbados. In a statement issued after the meeting, the foreign minister said it provided a greater understanding of Mr. Guaido's views and perspectives on how to move forward in the search for peaceful solutions. CARICOM has condemned the European Union over a revised tax governance blacklist that includes several Caribbean countries. A statement issued by the CARICOM Secretariat on Thursday, March 27th, said this is a renewed attack on the economic prospects of member states. The EU's action constitutes an infringement on member states' sovereign right of self-determination in the best interest of CARICOM people, the statement said. The statement noted CARICOM's concerns that the EU's tax good governance strategy is beginning to border on anti-competitive behavior, targeting the decimation of the international business and financial services sector in the Caribbean. And as CARICOM member states continue to benefit from the 50 million US dollars Caribbean Renewable Energy Fund, which the United Arab Emirates committed in November 2017, Barbados has successfully completed a solar project in St. John. A UAE grant funding of $7 million US million facilitated the installation of a 420 kilowatt ground mounted solar farm on 1.5 acres of land and the supply and installation of a 350 kilowatt solar carport in Bridgetown, Barbados. Barbados Minister of Energy and Water Resources, Mr. Wilfred Abrams, speaking at the plant's inauguration on Monday, March 25th, said the UAE partnership with CARICOM member states is to reduce the high cost of energy, which has been identified as a primary barrier to growth. Grenada got its turn on Monday, March 25th, to host the regional series of sensitization seminars on the CARICOM results-based management system. CARICOM's Deputy Secretary General, Ambassador Monorma Suknandan, told the gathering of public and private sector participants that the system is aimed at developing a more results-focused approach to managing programs and projects. It's our community of which we are a part and which we serve that should benefit. Using RBM will also diminish or minimize the well-known implementation deficit at several levels and within several structures, which includes the ministerial level. We can hold each other accountable for not making progress, but it is necessary that all of us know what RBM is, how to use it and work with it in our national and regional development plans. The CARICOM Secretariat is coordinating the production of the first results focused performance framework, which should be completed by April 2019. Mr. Craig Beresford, who heads the unit which is leading the production, told the Grenada Gathering that tracking progress is key. We have been linking using virtual means with member states on a quarterly basis and our institutions to discuss implementation progress. 
So on a quarterly basis, we discuss how we are doing in terms of the progress, where there are log jams, issues, challenges at all. We try to see how best we can treat with them at that level and at that point so that at the end of the year, we're not looking back to say, why didn't we achieve what we should have achieved? Preparations are advancing well for the hosting of CariFest 14 in Trinidad and Tobago from August 16 to 27 this year. The Trinidad and Tobago Minister of Community Development, Culture and the Arts, Dr. The Honorable Nayan Gatsby Dolly, said Trinidad and Tobago intends to market the rich cultures of the region to the world. She was at a time speaking at the 27th meeting of the Regional Cultural Committee on Wednesday, March 27th, with the preparations for Carifesta on the agenda. Program Manager for Culture and Community Development at the CARICOM Secretariat, Dr. Hilary Brown, spoke to the communications unit about the preparations for CARIFESTA 40. Well, within the CARIFESTA program, mm -hmm. we have what we call the super concerts mm -hmm. and the signal events. Right. So in the case of the super concert, um, we are very excited that Trinidad and Tobago has already nailed down um, the participation of Shaggy, wow, wow. Uh, Michelle mm -hmm. Montano, mm -hmm. and also Kasav. Oh, wow. From Guadeloupe. Okay. So it's going to be a nice mix, and of course, there are going to be other acts added as we get closer right. to the festival. I understand that we have but some I ambassadors for Carifesta this year. Various yes, we have artists. brand ambassadors. Mm -hmm. Um, and this is our first, which I think is great. And I think Ma Michelle is one of Michelle those ambassadors. Is one. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, Alison Hines All right from then. Barbados. Um, a number of artists have come on board, wow. and I think that's really great. And in the world of sport, there is a new leadership team at Cricket West Indies, the cricket administrative body in the Caribbean. CWI held elections last Sunday, and Mr. Ricky Skerritt, a former Windies team manager, was elected president. Mr. Kishore Shallow was elected vice president. The duo defeated Dave Cameron and Emmanuel Nanthan. In remarks after the election, the new president said that he was humbled and deeply honored to be elected and pledged to work for the improvement on and off the field for West Indies cricket. The government of St. Kitts and Nevis whose Prime Minister, Dr. the Honorable Timothy Harris, holds the chairmanship of the community, and the Prime Minister of Grenada, Dr. the Honorable Keith Mitchell, were among those sending early congratulatory messages to Mr. Skerritt and expressing confidence in the future of West Indies cricket. Find the details of these and other stories on the CARICOM Secretariat's news blog, today.caricom.org, Visit the CARICOM website www.caricom.org, like our Facebook page, follow us on Twitter, and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. See you next time.